Hello everyone. Welcome back to this channel. My name is Ashish and I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. In this video, I'll be talking about stroke, which is a very important and commonly asked topic in lab exams. If you support my work on YouTube, you can do so by clicking on the like button for this video. You can subscribe to this channel and you can share this video with your friends. So let's begin. What is stroke? By definition, stroke is acute onset focal neurological deficit of vascular origin, which lasts for more than 24 hours. If it is less than 24 hours, then it is TIA or transient ischemic attack. This is the diagram for the cerebral circulation and it describes the various arteries which supply the brain and uh, <coughs> the circle of villus which is formed at the base of brain. And it can be a confusing diagram for many doctors. So let's talk about it in detail. First of all, there are two sources of cerebral supply. The first is by the internal carotid artery and uh, <coughs> This is for the anterior circulation of the brain and the internal carotid arteries give rise to anterior and middle cerebral artery. The second source is the basilar artery, which is for the posterior circulation of the brain and the basilar artery gives rise to the posterior cerebral artery. This diagram shows the circulation and it it shows what all areas of the brain are supplied by which artery. So the anterior cerebral artery supplies the frontal and the medial cerebrum. The middle cerebral artery supplies the lateral part of the cerebral hemisphere. The posterior cerebral artery supplies the occipital lobe and the basilar artery supplies the cerebellum, the brain stem and the occipital lobe. And you can see all of this in the diagram to your right. Talking about the pathogenesis of stroke. Most of the strokes are ischemic in origin and this comprises 80% of strokes. And the ischemia can be due to thrombosis, emboli, which is from the heart as in the case of atrial fibrillation or from the carotid artery in case of carotid stenosis or it can be due to global hypoperfusion as in shock. The second type of strokes are hemorrhagic and this comprises 20% of strokes and this could be due to hypertension, AV malformations in the brain, bleeding disorders, subarachnoid hemorrhages and intracranial tumors. Talking about the presentation of a stroke. So the presentation will depend on the vascularity involved. The middle cerebral artery stroke is the most common one and it's for about 90% of the strokes that the middle cerebral artery is involved. This causes weakness of or sensory loss on the opposite or contralateral side of the lesion. This causes homonymous hemianopsia on the opposite, opposite side of the stroke and it causes aphasia if the stroke occurs on the same side as the speech center, which is left side in 90% of the patients. If the anterior cerebral artery is involved, then it can cause personality changes and cognitive defects. It can cause urinary incontinence and it can cause leg weakness, which is usually more than the arm weakness. And this is because the anterior cerebral artery supplies the medial part of the cerebrum and according to the homunculus, the medial part controls the, the motor supply to the leg. If the posterior cerebral artery or PCA is involved, then there is ipsilateral sensory loss of the face and the ninth and 10th cranial nerve are involved as well. There is also contralateral sensory loss of the limbs and there is limb ataxia because of the involvement of cerebellum. This one is a very important blab one question and this is lateral medullary syndrome or Wallenberg syndrome. And this is very commonly asked in the blab one exam. 
It is due to ischemia of the lateral part of medulla and it's due to the blockage of vertebral artery or pica, which is posterior inferior cerebellar artery. The presentation can be with dizziness or vertigo, dysphagia, diplopia, nystagmus. Then there can be some ipsilateral signs such as ipsilateral ataxia, loss of pain and temperature on the face, Horner syndrome, soft palate paralysis, and laryngeal and pharyngeal paralysis. And then there can be some contralateral sinus as well, which is loss of pain and temperature sensation on the trunk and the limbs. For recognition of stroke in the emergency room, you need to go for the rosier scoring, and it comprises of the following criteria, which include facial weakness, arm weakness, leg weakness, speech disturbances, visual field effect, loss of consciousness or syncope and seizure and stroke is unlikely if the score is less than or equal to zero. What investigations will you go for a stroke? So the best initial test is a non-contrast CT scan of the head and this is usually done to exclude a hemorrhagic stroke as soon as possible so that we can start the treatment quickly. The most accurate test is MRI brain, but it takes a lot of time for this test to be done. So the best initial test is a non-contrast CT to exclude hemorrhagic stroke. And you can see on the image on your right how an ischemic or an hemorrhagic stroke looks. Talking about the treatment of ischemic stroke, if you think that there is an element of ischemic stroke, and the patient presented within three hours of symptom onset or it can be up to 4.5 hours so you can go for thrombolysis with alteplase. If the patient presented after three hours of having the stroke symptom onset or if the patient woke up with the stroke symptoms then you cannot go for thrombolysis and you'll have to go for aspirin which is 300 milligrams per orally or per rectally if the patient is not able to swallow for two weeks and you can add diapyridamol or switch to clopidogrel if the patient is already on aspirin and after this you need to go for clopidogrel 75 milligrams which is long term and statins which will again be continued long term and these are also the treatment for a TIA thrombectomy or intra-arterial clot extraction is one of the newer treatments and this can be done after a CT angiography or MR angiography and this is usually done within six hours of symptom onset. The treatment of hemorrhagic stroke is very different from that of ischemic stroke and it's mostly supportive. You need to reverse anticoagulation if the patient is on anticoagulants and you need to lower the systolic blood pressure to less than 140 millimeters of mercury within one hour and surgery is not often indicated in hemorrhagic strokes so that's all about it for this video and if you have any further queries you can comment in the comment section or you can text me on instagram and i'll try to solve your queries there so thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in another video